today. From Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. This is the National Football League. Opened in 2017. There's a look at the beautiful state of the art Mercedes Benz Stadium here in Atlanta, GA. Today we've got an NFC South matchup as it'll be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the Atlanta Falcons. kicker Chase McLaughlin to get us started and we are underway from Atlanta this fielded right at the goal line and makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23 yard line the Falcons ready to go to work here on offense and at the helm in his second season Charles it's Desmond Ritter and you know how scouts always talk about checking all the boxes I think this young man does exactly that when you're looking for an NFL quarterback. Proven leader, teams went 43 and six while he was in college, has speed, dual threat ability, and production off the charts while he was in school, and also did a nice job of limiting turnovers. When you put it all together, there's a lot to be excited about for this young quarterback. Here's the eighth overall pick from Texas. It's B. John Robinson. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. It'll go as a loss of a yard on the game's first play. Second down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football. But that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Here's Ritter. Checks this one down to Robinson. It'll go as a gain of four. Third and seven now. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. Ritter throwing on third down. That is caught. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Ritter and London team up there. First down, Atlanta. Well, you want to make sure that on an opening drive that you at least stay out there for a while and get into the flow of the game. A three and out would have been problematic, but that's a good throw there to ensure they get another set of downs. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Looking to throw it here, Ritter. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Hey, 
So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Another throw coming up here for Ritter. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Robinson. So five yards here, five on the play. And that'll bring up second down. But yet another completion here on this opening drive, and he's now perfect 4-4 four of four to start. Pretty solid execution here. And how about how everyone's handled their nerves? Because you know what it's like to start a ball game. You're so amped up and ready to go that sometimes the execution isn't there. They've been flawless so far. Well drilled, well prepared, and excited to start this game. Meanwhile, Ritter's throw into the hands of Pitts here. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks 33. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive. And here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. On first and 10, it's Robinson. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive, and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally, because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. On second down, another shot for Robinson. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Officially no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. And I don't think he got there, no. She's short by maybe a foot, maybe. Call it fourth and inches. And that doesn't have to gain big yardage. Should be an impactful play because if you can get those pass rushers second guessing themselves that they might get hit with a screen, maybe you can wind up slowing them down just a step. And if you do that, that's a win for that play. And on their first drive, the offense staying out there. They're going to go for it on fourth. Ritter to throw it. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. They only got a couple, but a couple's all that they needed as they convert on fourth. And that's a big pickup of a first down. And you know that all week, both sides of the ball, offense and defense, are going through every situation. And in this case, the offensive guys had the right play dialed up because defensively, you work on fourth down situations as well. And deflating for the defense, they can't get the stop here. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. He'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. I certainly like what he did right there because he smartly wanted to avoid forcing anything downfield because nothing appeared to be open. Nice harmless slide there to avoid the big hit. And he gets a small gain on the play. Now second and five. Ritter now. That's into the hands of Pitts, the tight end. And Pitts is going to pick up a Falcons first down as he's down to the 11. A five-yard pass on the heels of a five-yard run. Good enough for the first. We're scoreless after one. Back now in Atlanta, second quarter action. The Falcons with the football as they've got it with a first and ten. motion right and they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep and this is not going to work as planned he's going to be met and dropped behind the line of scrimmage coming in to put a lick on him was Levante David well as a wide out when you take that handoff and you're coming around the edge you're expecting to see nothing but empty space in front of you 
but if not... Well, things can go south in a hurry, and that's exactly what we saw on that play with a loss. A rare misstep on that last play because the drive has been strong, but now it's second and 12. They'll give it to Patterson. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. The second down play, not much better than the first, just a gain of one there. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. As soon as he leaked out and began his route, someone on the defensive side broke with him and arrived just in time to separate him from another reception. So on fourth down, Ritter heads to the sideline. Young Way Koo gets set for the Atlanta field goal. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. Koo knocks this one through the post. And the Falcons are out to a 3-0 advantage. So a pretty good opening drive. That'll make the home fans somewhat happy. They wanted six, but they got three in the early lead. And they should be happy. The guys look good getting down the field. That's got to give them a little bit of hope. The good things are in store here today for them. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. So here are the Buccaneers ready to go on offense with a new man at the helm here for 2023 in his sixth season now in the NFL, Baker Mayfield. And the first possession isn't until the second quarter, but what's nice about it, it's only down three. So what you sell your team on is, look, one possession, one drive, we put it in the end zone. We're in the lead in this game. Let's go, guys. Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And that's complete. It's Chris Godwin. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. That's a good start to the ball game. Maybe a little bit of a tone setter offensively. They come out throwing right away, and it's an early completion and a quick first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Now a third round pick a year ago. Here's Rashad White. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Now, that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big-time running play and create extra space, you've kind of hit the jackpot there. They go play action. Mayfield. It's caught. This is White. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 40. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big-time run, big-time pass. A one-two combination. Looked pretty good. How about that? They, let's, see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. Mayfield on first down. A quick pass here to Godwin. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Same exact result as last play, a pickup of 11. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. First down, Mayfield. Right back to Chris Godwin. 
And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Ten more for him on that one. He's been a busy man. It's a first down. That's the third time on this drive that these two have connected with each other. They've got a real rapport going. And right now, it's paying off with big chunks of yardage, as shown by that last play. So here's a first and ten now down inside the 20. Mayfield with it once more. This one taken in by Otten. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. 10 more there and another first down. Second quarter, two minutes remain. 3 0 our score. Mayfield. And he's got it. Caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Trey Palmer, a nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Bucs have taken the lead. As a former defender, I would be angry as well. Could not get off the field. Well-executed offensive drive. No matter what the defense tried, they couldn't stop them. Chase McLaughlin on for the extra point. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. So that drives seven plays in length. And it's all finished off with a touchdown by Tampa Bay. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And Patterson not going to return this. It'll come out to the 25. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons' offense. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize, like going to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. First down, here's Ritter. That's caught left side, the tight end pits. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Give him 10 yards there, and about by the nose of the football, he's going to have a first down. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus. And indeed, he gets enough for the first down. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. But from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. But let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. The Ritter back to throw. It's caught. It's Miller. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. Ritter will set up to throw it. 
That's going to be caught by Pitts. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. They've looked his way quite a bit, and in my estimation, as well they should. Well, that's now five catches in this first half alone. And he picks up another first down. He's been an important part of their offense here early. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Back to throw, Ritter. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sacked back at the 38. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. Ritter. Under pressure, and they got to him again. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. Ritter and the Falcons need an answer and a big play here on third and long following the sack. Back to throw here. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. That is the first time that they've targeted him that he has not come down with a catch. He's caught everything that's been thrown his way, a dominant pass receiver that can break down any defense because when he's doing that kind of work, it really hurts you on the back end. And even though it's an incompletion there, I think they're going back to that well. The punt team on now as Pinion sends this one away. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. That punt was near perfection as it checked up inside the five-yard line. You never know where these things are going to go, do you? No. What was it? You got a John Heisman quote about that, yeah, right? Yeah, he said the football is roughly a prolate spheroid, which means it's going to bounce funny, and you never know where it's going to end up. near his goal line. Here's Mayfield. It's a short one here. Complete to the tight end. Nothing at all on that one. It'll be second down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players. Somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. And he'll just keep two hands on the football as he'll be taken down after a short pickup. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean also just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment. But welcome, everyone, to our Creative Village Studios in the EA Sports Halftime Report. This game's had a little bit of everything thus far and certainly plenty to look forward to as the teams are right back out there for the second half. So we'll get right back out there as well as we'll turn it back over to Brandon God. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far.
The Bucks with the lead, and they'll get the football first as the second half is underway. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. The Bucks' offense set to begin this third quarter. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively. Just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to how did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. Now he dumps this off over the middle, and he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. Well, this defense certainly knows they're going to have their hands full trying to slow down this passing game. Here's an example on the very first play from scrimmage. I think we'll see some different looks, maybe some pressure from different places, but it didn't work there, and it's a quick first down. First down, here's White. And he finds a little bit of room, enough for four yards. It'll be second down. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Second down at six now from the 42. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. There's a short one taken in by Otten. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Mayfield now from the 50. That's completed right side to Palmer. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. The big gainer there on the catch and run, 37 yards. And the offense is saying to itself right now, if only they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Mayfield looks to throw. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And the Buccaneers are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. A lot of precision being shown on this opening drive. They've been methodical, they've been crisp, and as a reward, they're going to be set up with an early first and goal. Field to throw it. And he hauls it in for the Buccaneer touchdown. Cade Otten, a two yard touchdown grab. And the Bucs take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. Circle that drive because that might be one to remember. Well executed to give them a little cushion. Well, let's take it into the boxing ring. You talk about them commanding it, keeping the fight where they wanted to, whether it was in the center of the ring or putting them on the ropes because it was jab, jab, jab. And finally, the haymaker to put that drive away. McLaughlin for the extra point. This one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. A drive that time of six plays. And Kate Otten capped things off with a touchdown grab.
Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. Taken at the goal line. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Here comes the Falcons offense. It's their first possession of the second half now. They make their second half debut here, and things are looking a little bit tougher now. You give up the points there, Charles, that touchdown drive on the other side. So now it's a two-score game here. Got to be careful. They certainly do, and I'm just wondering at halftime if those guys just looked into each other's eyes and realized what they've got to get done and come out a little bit more charged up because if they don't get some kind of points here, that next drive, that could make this a three-possession game. Now a handoff to start it out. Robinson. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. From the 34-yard line here, second and three. They'll run again here with Robinson. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 14 yards there and a Falcon first down. Despite the score, despite the deficit, no quitting this guy. He's running angry, running through arm tackles. He wants to change what that scoreboard is saying. Throw on first down. He's got his pass catching tight end. That's Pitts. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. 11 more on that one and another first down. A couple of first downs right in succession. And this is an offense that can really use a good drive. And they're off to a fast start here. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move, first and 10. From the shotgun, he looked to throw. Throw left side complete, that's Patterson. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. the 36 now. Here's a second down and four. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. Short throw caught by Pitts. And Pitts is going to pick up a Falcons first down as the tackle made at the 31-yard line. I got kicked out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him but the tight end drag route definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down they'll run this one right with Robinson and he went nowhere well he went backwards back to the 33 Shaquille Barrett there pushing upfield to make the stop this defense is just flat getting after it they have not given up much of anything in the run game case in point right there A rare misstep on that last play because the drive has been strong, but now it's second and 12. They'll set up to throw. Throw out right, take it in by Patterson. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And third and eight now. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we play as we played three quarters. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Hey, hey. 
The offense on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and eight. Now back to throw. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. The coverage keyed in on him since that last completion his way. He earned a little more attention on that route, and that made it a lot tougher to get a clean throw his way. So on fourth down, Ritter heads to the sideline. Young Way Koo gets set for the Atlanta field goal. He made his first attempt, this from 45. Koo knocks this one through the post. And a second field goal here cuts their deficit to 14 to six now. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. Here's Devin Tompkins on the return. And able to get this out to the 25. The Tampa Bay offense set to go again. The field goal we just saw has this now at a one-score game. And on this side of the football, things are getting pretty tenuous, a little stressful. Blood pressure up a little bit, you think? I think up a lot of it. Uh, could you imagine taking the <laughs> pulse right now? Might be like a jackhammer out there on that side of the ball. But here's what the deal is. I think what we've observed is a team that's been playing not to lose as opposed to playing to win. And they've got to get back to that. And that means opening things up again, being a little more free in what they're trying to get done on offense. Meanwhile, Mayfield's throw taken in by Evans here. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive, first down. Well, it may seem a little unorthodox to some people. Got the lead, fourth quarter, yet he's still firing away. I think he believes that's the best way to go ahead and win the game. Yeah, a lot of coaches say, let's just run the football, be conservative. He's sticking to his game plan. No, that is his game, and that's what they're going to ride. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. They'll go up the middle with White, and not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. Now second and nine. They keep it on the ground, wide again. And he'll be tackled at the 45, following a gain of just two. You'll forgive me if I get excited about what we just saw there, won't you? I know I'm supposed to be neutral here, but those were terrific plays back-to-back -back defensively. They know what the mission is. They've got to force a punt here if they want to have a chance to win the game. They absolutely do. Steps one and two done. Now they need this third step. On third down, Mayfield. That's complete to his receiver, Godwin. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. The result, only four yards there on the play. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion, and you count on your D to make it stand up. And a good result there as that'll get out of bounds and pin them back at their 10-yard line. And for an offense that is struggling, this is not where you want to start from. Great punt. Fantastic punt. And for all those who wonder, what do punters do during the course of practice each and every day? The best ones do what we just saw there. Work on positioning the football and helping their team. Falcons first and 10 here as Ritter gets them ready from back at their own 10-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. 
And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? Second and 10. Working from the gun, Ritter on the throw led him too much that time. It's incomplete. A couple of quick incompletions, and now they're just one more away from getting off the field. They've got options now. Could they dial up a blitz here or just drop everyone into coverage to crowd the throwing lanes? So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Ritter from the gun. Flush to his right. He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll be brought down with a penalty flag on the field. It was a late decision to throw, and it might have been too late. So the big play nullified a legal forward pass. And maybe we know why they were able to get such a good chunk of yardage on that play. That pass was illegal. Here's Bradley Pinion now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. It's a 42-yard punt. They keep him to just a yard on the return, and the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now, heading back out onto the field. Right now, clinging to a one-score lead, Charles, and I think operating within that four-minute offense with a little less than four minutes to go applies here, right? It certainly does, and that means the playbook is still wide open. But you are a little bit more careful about what you're calling. You want plays that are going to gain yardage, how would you say it, consistently, mm -hmm. right? You don't need the big shots downfield, but make sure the clock continues to run. Pile up the first downs, and the goal? End the game with your quarterback kneeling down at the end, and you still have the lead. Mayfield now looking to throw on first down. Over the middle to Evans. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. to throw Mayfield the quick throw knocked away it's incomplete but based on the play we just saw there he might not be the guy you want to challenge in coverage on these all-important snaps he certainly looks dialed in right now now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down throwing Mayfield and that is incomplete. Nice back-to-back -back plays defensively. They're stacking momentum now. One incompletion, two incompletion. They're going for more. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. Now the Falcons offense gets ready to head back onto the field. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalposts, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. 
They'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave them with second and a yard. I did like his decision making there to make sure they picked up something instead of forcing a throw. Now they've got more manageable play coming up to try and pick up the first down. And don't rule out the possibility that he just keeps it and runs again. Out of the gun, here's Ritter. And it's incomplete. No coverage bust by the defense here. They did a nice job accounting for everybody, and that led to an incompletion. The Falcons on third down, just one for five to this point. They're up against a third and one situation. Looking to throw it here, Ritter. On a bad time late for a poor throw, it's intercepted. Picked up by Jamel Dean. Oh man, partner, this is something cornerbacks love to do, and that's outthink a quarterback. If you get a sense that they're gonna throw a quick out route or a quick hitch, you can just lay back an extra yard or two, but then really put your foot in the turf and drive on the football. And here I think he baited the quarterback into the throw and made it pay off. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Another important fourth quarter series coming up, that last INT helping to maintain their slim advantage. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Now a give up the middle. This is White. And a five-yard gain as he's down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. On second down, they'll run with White. And pretty good running as he'll be close to a first down at the Falcons' 23. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes. And we've got a one-score game. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. They're facing a critical third down now as they try to hold on to this lead. Here's Mayfield. And that nearly the pick that they needed. He couldn't pull it in, though, and it's fourth down. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got a lead. You've got to protect it. And he's taking chances, putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? Fourth down, Mayfield. And it's going to be batted down. And it will go the other way with the football. The Bucs try it on fourth down, but come up empty. And the Falcons' defense stands tall. They'll get the football back. So that's a decision that could loom pretty large here. They go for it on fourth down, but come up empty. But I actually like the call. And the reason? It shows me a head coach has faith in his team overall. First on the offensive side, thinking they can pick it up but also knowing that he has faith in his defense that if they don't, they'll go out there and stop him. I like the confidence he showed. They'll come up first and 10 here. Ritter looks to throw it. Going right side here, and that's complete. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. What a big tackle there defensively. One of the most difficult things for a defender to do, and think about the speed that he brought down. If he gets away, he's likely gone. They'll come up now on second down. Ritter. That's going to be caught downfield by Miller. And he 
Eagles going to get out of bounds with the first down. So that's going to double their pleasure for sure. They get the first and save the timeout. Absolutely ideal there. Get a good size play, get out of bounds. Well, you saw the coaching there. That is taught and it is emphasized. Get out of bounds, understand your situation, as well as just understanding the game. And now it appears that the referee's been buzzed and we'll get a review. And this being inside two minutes of play, everything coming from up above. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. So the folks in New York just going to wind up confirming what the official saw as this play will stand as is. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and ten now. Now Ritter. Fighting Miller once more complete. And he's got this down to the 35. Okay, there's three timeouts left, right? Think you got to use one here, don't no you? No doubt about it. I'd use one right here. Here's first and ten. Here's Ritter. He's into space past the 25. And he's got it all the way down to the 12-yard line. Uh, he's been quiet all afternoon. He may have just come up with a play of the day right there, though. Obviously, it's not the volume in what you get done. It's the quality, and that was a quality catch right there. Here's first down. Ritter looking to throw it here. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. And now defensively in the two-minute drill, the big key to me, make sure you understand your assignments, and anytime you get a chance to tackle someone in bounds, get them on the ground. Twelve yards between them and the end zone, second and ten. Back to throw, Ritter. Eluding the prank. Oh, no, he lost the football. And it's picked up by the Buccaneers. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And they were hoping to get down there, get the score, and get this thing into overtime. How deflating. Absolutely. I mean, let's face it, heartbreaking. They had an opportunity, had a chance, and probably were feeling pretty good about what was going on. And that was taken away from them by their own mistake. Yeah, the opportunity squashed. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. And three timeouts remaining here defensively, but really not much reason to use them at this point as this one is all but over. If they use the timeouts here, it's strictly for show. We got playing the catch. Down to a knee here. The defense still with a couple of timeouts. We'll see if they want to use them. And here come the whistles at a timeout with seven seconds left. Victory formation now for the Buccaneers. Down to a knee they go. And now with six seconds remaining, they're going to burn their final timeout. Hey. 
Down to one knee goes Mayfield, and that's all she wrote. in these lower scoring games you know it better than anybody uh, points are at such a premium but taking care of the football is king they played turnover free from whistle to whistle and they come through with a victory yeah and that's what won them the game because even doing it that way being that clean partner they weren't able to really run away with this game so that tells us just how important it was to make sure you played mistake free football that led to the victory That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. Till next time, we say so long from Atlanta.